Randy, the National Couture. I'm Stephen Bonner. This is Canada Spider Grove. I'm Cara Prezen. This is Brandon Truth Vera. Hey, I'm Ariane Celeste. Yeah, I'm Chuck Dunn. I'm Forrest Griffin. I am Fyodor. You are watching MMA Fix. Welcome to a special installment of the MMA Fix. My name is Dave Farah in the Raw Vegas studios in Las Vegas. Next to Steve Cofield, a.k.a. Cage Rider. How you doing, man? I'm good. Let's actually start today's piece with talking about some of those fights that are on the undercard that you think are going to make some pretty good matchups and possibly yeah. have some good betting odds for the uh, audience. Yeah. Well, I mean, this takes us back to UFC 95, right? We had a good argument before 95. People said, oh, the card's not that good. And then what happened... You wound up getting nine fights. I yeah. think the Brits actually got all ten fights, and that Mandalones fight, right, mm -hmm. against Paul Kelly, turned out to be potential fight of the night, and that was the first fight. So there's some really good matchups, and the key to uh, judging matchups are the prices. So right. if you see a lot of minus 150s, minus 170s on favorites, those are going to be good fights, and they're hard fights to gamble on. Kendall Grove was involved in a really good fight. He's not on the televised portion. He's against Jason Day. Listen, Brandon Vera is not on the televised portion. It should be entertaining because he really has his back against the wall now. Uh, but, I mean, it tells you how deep this card is that those types of guys may not make the main card. You could see Gray Maynard and Jim Miller turn out to be a fight of the night type fight. So this is a really deep card. And I really like the other fight that's actually slated for the TV portion. Uh, great fight between two wrestlers. I'm excited to see what... Mark Munoz has. I think he's a little small for the weight, and we'll see again if Matt Hamill can overcome a lot of the deficiencies that you and I both see with his game, but he, he keeps winning. You can see the odds at MMAfix.com. Let's get into some of these fights right now. Pete Sell, minus 135 in some places. You said that he was even according to the Venetian uh -huh. today. Yep. And then Matt Brown is plus 105 or minus 130. Once again, one of these fights that's sort of all over the place and kind of has a few people scratching their heads why it's placed on the card where it is. Uh, your prediction, or your assumption rather, is that it's on there because Matt Brown is a Cincinnati guy mm -hmm. and it's going to be uh, an Ohio fight, correct? And we've seen this. This is another one of those cards, just like the Cincy card, just like previous Columbus cards, where they try to place either Cincy guys, Ohio State guys on there. And Matt Brown is sort of a local. And there's other fighters on this card with the same deal. Um, Slugfest. You yeah, know, that's it. Exactly. Goes back to, I told everyone out there, Dan Hardy fight against Rory Markham. Markham never goes to a completion. Uh, in this case, he was the loser in that one. But Dan Hardy's a good finisher. Same thing in this one. Matt Brown likes to slug. You saw on the reality show, you punch him in the face. He may have a strength on the ground, and he, he does have a strength on the ground in this one. He can go and really give Pete Sell the business on the ground, but in the end, he won't do it. Um, and I'm excited to see Pete now in another go around at 170. He's a big 170. You know he likes to throw. So someone's going down in this one. Um, if not, they're really going to beat the snot out of each other. Yeah, a little refresher if you're not very familiar with Pete Sale. He had a great fight against Scott Hans and Steel Smith back at the joint. Uh, I forget even what UFC it was. It was a fight night, but yeah. it was a great fight. Definitely a slugfest. Who's your prediction, though? Who's going to win this fight? You know, I think Pete Sale has a shot if he fights his fight. He didn't look great his first go-around 170, but I think a lot of that was the weight cut. Um, I think style-wise, if it stands the whole time, He's got really heavy hands. So I'd give a slight edge to sell, but it's mostly based on value. That may, might be the kind of fight that I would just stay away from because there's not enough on either side. And either guy could score knockout of the night. Okay, my pick is going to go the other direction. I'm going to say that Matt Brown's going to win the fight. I think that they're pretty evenly matched when it comes to punching power. Pete Sell may have a slight edge there, but Matt Brown definitely has a reach advantage. And he's really training with some top-level guys over at Extreme Couture. So I'm going to say that Matt Brown wins that fight. Moving along. Gabe Gonzaga, minus 180. Shane Carwin, plus 150. Gonzaga is 10-3. and 3. Carwin is 10-0. and 0. A lot of people are saying this is the next Brock Lesnar. Do you agree with this? Carwin has all the tools to be a Brock Lesnar type. He's actually got a very similar background. He, he was a much better NFL prospect. This guy was a, you know, a, um, a high-level uh, potential draft pick in the NFL playing the offensive line. Lost in the, I think it was the Division II finals uh, to Cal State Bakersfield, uh, Stephen Neal, in the, that was for the national championship wrestling that year. He, he's got the game. Now, it depends on how the fight goes. Uh, my worry with Gonzaga, I think he can do everything. He's a really good stand-up guy. He's a pretty decent wrestler. We know his jiu-jitsu is top-notch. But he has run into trouble a couple of times. When people close space and bully him, you saw what happened. Randy Couture, strength-wise, should not be able to match Gonzaga, but early in that fight, I think he broke his will. And I think yeah. the same exact thing happened against Fabrizio Verdum. If Carwin chooses to fight the right way, which is close distance, get it against the cage, and maul him, he's going to have a size advantage. I think he can break him early on, uh, get him to the ground. If he does ground and pound, he has a good shot in this. Now, a boxing match, maybe not the best approach. So it depends on what kind of fight Carwin does in his first really big step up. 
And this is important. Shane Carwin walks around at about 270, 280. He's a huge guy. He cuts down to the max of 265. We'll hover around the 262 mark uh, as he gets ready for a fight, but he's very good at controlling his weight. He's very much like Brock Lesnar in the sense that he can make these dramatic weight cuts and it doesn't affect him with huge dehydrations. Uh, Gonzaga, on the other hand, walks around at about 242 pounds where he fights. As a result, uh, Carwin could be a lot bigger and a lot stronger. And like you said, if Carwin can close the distance, I think that uh, Gonzaga could have some troubles. But overall, I'm going to say that Gonzaga, because he's on such a different level, he's widely considered to be in the top 10 when it comes to heavyweights in the world. I think that his skill set is going to present a whole new set of challenges for Carwin, and I doubt that Carwin is going to be able to surprise Gonzaga. So I'm going to say that my pick is Gonzaga. All right. I don't think that pick is terrible, but I'm going to go with the value. I'm going to go for the upset, and I think Carwin will be smart enough to go in there and fight a wise fight. He's already had the path laid out by him by Couture and Verdum. You bully the guy, you can break him. You stand at a distance, you let him kick, you let him throw. He's going to beat you, Gabe Gonzaga will. But in this case, I think Carwin's going to get the job done. Okay, it's going to be a good fight. Finally, the top fight on the card for the night for UFC 96 is Rampage Jackson versus Keith Jardine. This is an exciting fight to me. I think it could turn into a slugfest. The odds, Rampage Jackson minus 320, Keith Jardine plus 240. Do you think that's a fair spread? I think it's a fair spread. I think, you know, Jardine has shown weaknesses in enough fights where he's been taken out that there is a risk there. We know that, not that his chin is suspect, but Rampage, if he hits you with the right shot, he can take out anyone. He's done it to Liddell. He's done it to Silva. So he's a dangerous guy. This, again, though, comes down to the style of the fight and game planning. And we yeah. talk, now we're starting to talk about this on every one of these cards. The Greg Jackson game plan going into a fight, if it's executed properly, it gives his fighter a really good shot, which means there's probably a little extra value that isn't built in already on Keith Jardine. Keith Jardine also has been, in the past, we've shown that he's very good with setting up some of his strikes with kicks. And Rampage Jackson showed he had a bit of a problem with that when he fought Forrest Griffin. Could that be a big factor? Absolutely. Especially when both of them have shown that they have devastating punching power. Mm -hmm. If it turns into a slugfest, it, who knows at this point. But uh, if, if Keith Jardine effectively uses his kicks to set up his punches, I think that he could... I uh, give Rampage a run for his money. I think that's the easiest way to break down the fight. You you did it for me. I mean, if he if he can stay on the outside and be re effective with the kicks, if he does the kind of damage that Griffin did, he's got a great shot in the fight. Now, if the distance gets closed and it's a straight boxing match, uh, I think Jackson's going to beat just about anybody. Um, and the other factor is, does either guy try to take it to the ground? Probably not, but yeah, Jackson could if he wanted to. Um, but I think... Jackson's power is just so devastating. I know Jardine has knocked some guys out. Um, he's just a scary guy right now. And you know, we talked about it before, the Vanderlei fight, that maybe his confidence was waning dead wrong. The guy is super yeah. confident. And I, I think, you know, the move over to a Wolf's Lair in Great Britain has actually worked out. It's a pretty nice camp, and he's gotten his confidence back. So I think he'll fight the right fight. So I don't love laying that kind of number. I probably won't lay that minus 320, but I think he's the safer guy in this one. Official pick, Rampage Jackson? I'm going with Rampage. I am back on board with Rampage, which may mean that's the uh, jinx and the kiss of death. <laughs> I'm going to agree. Rampage Jackson, also my pick. If you want to bet on the fights, you can go to MMAfix.com. You can see the odds from a number of different sports books uh, around the world, and you can place your money right there. Steve Cofield, I know that you do some nice coverage on your side as well. Yep. Remember, all the write-ups are on uh, cagewriter.com. They'll be up Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we'll probably throw them up again later in the week. And if you looked last time, we had some good value. It's not the main card, those big three fights, where you necessarily get all your value because that's the public area. Study a little bit, you can get some good value with the other fights. MMAfix.com is the website if you want to bet on the fight. Steve Cofield, always a pleasure to have you in studio. Good deal, thanks. I'm Dave Farah. Thanks for watching the MMA Fix.